In the next part of our Intro to Civil 3D video series here, we're going to take a look at a couple of the parts of the user interface that are of uh, most importance and you will be utilizing all the time within Civil 3D. Now in a typical Civil 3D drawing, because we build everything on top of each other and have all our objects on and visible, it can become quite a mess and it, it's hard to track down the right objects you're looking for. So that comes into play where we start using what's called the tool space. So there's a couple ways of accessing this. Through the home ribbon, we can click on tool space and it will load it up. And as a general rule of thumb, I keep it docked. I just always leave it here. If you're a typer, show TS as well. Now there's, we're gonna focus on the prospector tab in this video. And another video will be the settings tab. They're, they're both quite in depth here. If you are missing the prospector tab, there's a little button right here beside the tool space. It's called prospector. Some people will even type in prospector and that's where it'll disappear. Just type it in again to get it to come back. Now the prospector tab of the tool space, you can access your items, you can access your objects, you can create new objects, you can view what's in the drawing, you can see everything to do with the drawing in the prospector tab. As we see here, I have no survey points in this actual drawing because my surface is data shortcutted in. As well, I have no point groups. If we expand surfaces, we see I have a final lock grading here. Now this is data shortcutted uh, in reference to this little arrow here. I can still do a few things to this surface. So I can right click and go surface properties and we can view some general information. I can change the style. I can look at the definition, how it's built. But as you can see here, none of these are editable because this is a data shortcut. Under the analysis, I can perform some analysis on this surface. I can add in specific contours. I can look at the direction the, the surface is sloping. I can do an elevation analysis and create a, an elevation grading. I can look at the slopes, I can add slope arrows, I can add my own contours, and there's watersheds at the very last. I tend to not use these because they seem to bloat the drawing if you have a very detailed surface. And then finally, statistics. It just gives you a little bit of information about this number of points used to build the surface, elevations, surface area, etc. If we right click on surfaces, we can go into edit surface style as well. So this is the style that the surface is uh, relying on. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the settings video. What we wanna display, contours, contour smoothing. If you wanna make it look a little bit smoother, you can turn this on, it doesn't affect any of your data. 3D geometry, this is where we can choose to exaggerate stuff. So if we want to exaggerate our contours, I can go exaggerate. I can type a, a scale factor of 10. Grid as well, you can points, triangles. Exaggerate scale of 10. You can just see more definition when you go to view this in 3D. And finally, or under the analysis, so if you run any of those surfaces analysis from the previous video, you might have to come in here and change some of your options. And finally, here's the display tab. So what we can turn on different things. So if I turn on points, I'm gonna go back to the points here and see that they're using a little X, so I'll hit okay. And we have a few more points showing up in the surface. So wherever I have a lot of definition, we'll see a lot of points. And these are just points used to build the surface. They're not civil 3D survey points. We have our alignments as well. And I got a few data shortcutted alignments in. I'll open up these drawings and just give you more options and show you those. I can also expand that farther. So under this alignment, these profiles are tied to this alignment. So 64th Avenue design and existing are on 64th Avenue alignment. Along with the profile views, I got one profile view attached to this alignment. And all of my alignments will be the same. One profile view, with my two profiles, I just have design and existing. You very well may have four or five different profiles if you have to show bedrock or groundwater or clay layers, etc. Sites. 
it, um, in your drawing to keep things separate, I do have a video on sites. I suggest watching that. But this is how we organize objects. I'm going to say into what we call buckets. And anything in the bucket with another object in the same bucket, they will see each other and they will talk to each other and they will interact. So keep things separate if you're building separate pieces. Catchments I don't use. And then we have our pipe networks. So sanitary and storm, again, I have these data shortcutted in. Pressure networks, I have water. Some objects, when you click on them, they'll give you a little view down here of what it'll look like. Uh, it can be very laggy though. If I click on these objects, my pressure pipes, it loads it up down here, gives me all the pipes and all the options. But again, you see it's a really slow. It's displaying a lot of information in this little window here. The same with the storm and sanitary. It'll load up down here and you can do some simple modifications. If I had a corridor in here, we'd be able to access it. The assemblies used to build that corridor, any intersections and whatnot. Now, you have heard me mention data shortcuts quite a few times. So I'll just minimize this. Data shortcuts show down below. And if we're assigned to a project, so if I set my working folder and I browse to where I have this saved, that was, was that the right folder? Give it a second here to update. And it was. We can see down here, I have all these surfaces available in this project. It's a simple right click, create a reference and you can bring it in. I got all these alignments available to me. And if I look under the profiles, you can see I have a few additional options in here that I didn't add in. My pipe networks, again, sanitary and storm and my pressure networks. So that is the prospector tab here. Another important piece is this drop down right here. The active drawing view, so if we have a drawing open, that is our active drawing view. If we switch it to master view, this will show all the drawings you have open. And you can cycle through them, you can drag and drop styles between the two, so just pay attention, there's master view, there's active view. Two separate options here. Now back to the data shortcuts, if I want to say look at my surfaces, and we'll do the final lock grading. I'm gonna right click on this final lock grading. I'm gonna open that source drawing. And this will open up the drawing where that surface is located. And we'll give it a minute here. Okay, once our drawing is open up, I'm going to expand surfaces and take a look at my final lock grading surface here. This will give me a few more options than in the previous drawing. So again, here's the surface style. Under the definition, we can see some options down here. So this is how I built this surface. First, I started with a paste and then I added a break line and then I deleted a bunch of triangles and then finally added a couple break lines. Now this is my lock grading surface. I'm not gonna take you through exactly what each of these objects are, but it gives you the operation type of how you built the surface. If I go under build, we these are not grayed out. So we can exclude elevations, maximum angles, maximum triangle lengths, etc. Data operations, how do we wanna use, uh, how do we want it to view, use point files, yes, no, etc. And under the edit operations, we can modify some more stuff. Now every civil 3D object, we can right click, surface properties or surface style. Now that's uh, ways of accessing our data. So anything in the tool space, we can right click. I don't have any point groups. Alignments, there's no alignments in this drawing. Sites, properties. Again, right click on the object itself and go to properties. Alternatively, you could select the object on your screen, surface properties, surface style, it is there as well. So that is a quick overview of the prospector tab within your tool space. In the next video, we will take a look at the settings tab here.